Are you ahead of the game? Keep up with the latest news and commentary on markets, regulation, and more. Two wikis, video content, seven newsletters, and blogs right at your fingertips. JohnLothianNews.com Tell us about your role with NYSC Life. A significant part of my current focus is the um, people involved in the organization, encouraging the innovation, giving people some, some opportunity to kind of grow and expand their horizons, frankly, so that we can bring new products to market and expand the services that we offer to our clients and members. In parallel, there's lots of um, other areas where I focus and spend my time, there's helping out on our new clearinghouse and ensuring that that's fit for purpose for OTC product as well as listed product going forward. There is uh, new services we're trying to bring to market and new, new growth we're trying to stir in some of the existing markets that we currently operate. What new products will you be introducing? Adding fixed income products to our BeClear offering. So we brought BeClear to market many years ago, probably seven years ago. Um, predominantly an equity-based offering. We're adding rates products to that, hopefully by the end of the year. Um, we've had significant demand from the marketplace for that. Um, seems like now's the right time to do it, so we'll, we'll get that done shortly. What are some challenges that you face? The regulatory landscape that's constantly changing. We're trying to innovate and bring new services and products to market, but until we know the final rule sets really within which we'll operate, it's hard to innovate. It's hard to know exactly what what um, will make sense to our customers, what will appeal to them, what will be successful without knowing exactly the environment in which they're operating and, and we're operating. Are there any initiatives you're striving for? There are new asset classes we're looking to bring to market um, in the near future. As I said, expanding the services, both in terms of block trades that we offer, the wholesale facility of fixed income on BeClear, um, and indeed our matching algorithm in, as, as the the market uh, volumes and the participants in the market change. We're re-examining our matching algorithm, particularly on the short-term interest rate futures, to see if that's the most sensible. We have tweaked that um, you know, every couple of years since, um, since the markets went electronic. And, and as the external influences and factors kind of dictate it, we have to re-examine that and ensure it's most fit for purpose. Can you update us on the European Derivatives Clearinghouse? At the moment, life is the CCP to the contracts, but we are outsourcing a lot of functionality in terms of margin management, margin collection, to, and default management to LCH ClearNet. So we insourced that effectively June. Um, we submitted the FSA application in, last month in October. In Q1 2014, we'll redirect our continental derivatives, so the options and futures on Amsterdam and Paris, Portugal and Brussels, will be redirected to also clear at that CCP. So. Really, it's Q1 2014 when we complete the, the migration of all of our European contracts to our own clearinghouse in London. How do you view the competitive playing field for the exchange? We've had CME listing Euribor, we've had Eurex listing Euribor, um, but what I expect to happen is to frankly see the, the, the energy those firms and others put to competing with us growing um, in the coming months and years. I also think the OTC market may pose a threat going forward. There is some, you know, we, we, we hear the expression futurization of swaps. Um, I, I think there's, there's, it's undoubted, but that the OTC players, LCH ClearNet, for example, will also look to see what they can do in terms of um, products that would compete with our benchmark products and, and see if they can see synergies there for their, their strategic kind of futures. In your opinion, what is the outlook for regulation in the EU? Typically, has been seen as being quite slow moving. I, I see the pace accelerating quite a lot at the moment. Um, uh, we're mostly done now on a mirror, um, although some of the finer points are still being um, clarified for us. But we're mostly kind of there. We've now got Mifid and Mifir coming down the road. Um, I, I think generally the regulatory kind of proposals, if you like, uh, make a lot of sense. The two that I think are, are most concerning from our perspective are the open access, both from clearing and, and trading. Um, we view those as, as uh, whilst we understand the, the aspiration for competition, we think competition is kind of all, uh, or at any cost, is inappropriate. And we think there is some significant costs and risks inherent in open access on clearing and trading that have not at all been fully explored or thought through. 
How might things look in the future? If the proposals on open access, as they're currently um, written, uh, are implemented, I think things will look very, very, very differently. Um, I think the, the concept of clearing houses in different jurisdictions taking risks to each other is, is frankly very, very frightening. Um, but but that, will, that will see participants in the market go for the cheapest possible solution and it's eminently logical and rational from their perspective and I think that, that brings about some inherent challenges and, and risks that we should be very mindful of. Could this create a chaotic environment? It has the potential absolutely to create a lot of chaos. I think um, uh, how to manage that chaos, we would obviously kind of stick to what we know and do best, which is managing markets and, and offering markets and order books to clients and, and clearing facilities out to clients. But um, yeah, where, where you drive fragmentation or where the regulations require fragmentation, as we've seen in the equities market, it can be quite chaotic. What is the status of LIBOR as you see it? The whole LIBOR situation is very concerning to us, obviously. Um, we cooperated and contributed quite a lot um, to the weekly review, cooperated with that. Um, we think, frankly, that the, the results of that, the recommendations, the 10 recommendations coming out of Martin Wheatley's review, are sensible. Um, I don't think you can really replace LIBOR per se, but that there are some elements of it that need significant remediation. I think that's unquestionable.